Hey, it's me, Vraj, and I'm here to present to you Tic-Tac-Toe with my teammates, Alex, Zachary, and Luca. So what we're going to do is actually we're going to show you variants of Tic-Tac-Toe, not only the classical game, but other variants, and the rules, how they're played, uh, how to win, and not only that, but we also will show you the strategies, the best strategies to use to win each game. So the first one we're going to start with is not, all, not the classical uh, Tic-Tac-Toe, but we're going to start with Ultimate Tic-Tac-Toe. Now, what is Ultimate Tic-Tac-Toe, you ask? Well, it's pretty, it's pretty easy to draw. To explain is another story. So, Ultimate Tic-Tac-Toe starts with a huge 9x9 nine nine grid, like we've always seen before. However, these 9x9 nine nine big squares, we'll call them big squares, are divided into smaller 9x9s, nine small squares. So the layout is like if we had nine small tic-tac-toe games in a big tic-tac-toe game. So that's how you set up your board. Okay, so the main difference, the big difference about ultimate tic-tac-toe with tic-tac-toe is that there's actually rules about where you play. Because in this game, you don't get to decide where you want to play, you get to actually decide where your opponent gets to play. Let me explain to you. So, let's say X starts off the game, gets to play wherever he wants, okay? He plays in the middle, in the middle big square, and he plays in the middle right, okay? That means that that square, that small square he chose, the middle right, sends his opponent to the middle right big square, right? So if he plays in the middle right, O has to now play somewhere in the middle right big, big square. Let's say O plays in the bottom right of that that big square, right? So now X is, it's X's turn, and X is now sent to that bottom right B, big square because of where O played. O played in the bottom right big uh, bottom right square, so now X is now in the bottom right big square. X plays middle left of that small square. Right of that small grid. Now O is sent to a middle left big square. So then it keeps going on like that. You, your move actually decides where your opponent gets to play next. If you play on the bottom left of the small grid, your opponent is gonna have to play in the big bottom left grid. So it just keeps going on like that. Secondly, so you have to like predict where you're gonna send your opponent or where your opponent would send you, and then base your strategy on that so that you can get a better outcome. So there's also a well, kind of, a, I wouldn't say a rule, but kind of a rule in this in this game, right? Let's say, for example, this, this, um, this square, right, has been won by x. What I mean by won by x, actually, is, um, your goal is to fill out not only these small squares, like, you know, in normal tic-tac-toe, you would fill out a normal square, like, boom, let's say X, O, X, O, X, right? Boom. You just want normal tic-tac-toe, right? That's the same principle for this, except that you haven't won the whole game just by winning one of these small squares. If you win this small square, then this whole square becomes yours. That's your possession. But to win, you have to have three in a row in the big squares. So you have to have, the, you have to win in this one, you have to win in that one, or in other ways, like diagonally, you have to win in this one, in this one, or this way, we have to win in this one, in this one. So it's just a small game. Once you win the small game, congratulations, you get the square, but you have to win the other bigger squares to get your tic-tac-toe in the end. Now, like I was saying, the other rule I was talking about is that, let's say, uh, this square, this small square, let me erase this other one. So, let's say this square was won by X, right? Uh, oops. And like, O tried to stop him, right? So, O's, let's say it's O's turn, O's like, okay, I'll send you back to your bottom right, okay? Wait, that doesn't make sense. Wait, sorry. Like, oh, X's last move was middle right. So yeah, middle right. 
So Oa's next move is like, okay, I'll send you back to your bottom right. And then we ask ourselves, wait, but that, that big square has already been won. X should be allowed to play whenever and anywhere he wants, right? Wrong. Actually, if the square is won and there's still space left on that square on like in that square, X is forced to play there. So no matter what, X has to play in this square, even though if he's already won it. So X has to play somewhere and then the game continues on. But let's say the square was actually full, right? Then Let's say O sent X back here. Then, since it's already full, now X is actually able to play wherever he wants to because he doesn't have any choice. There's no space left. He can't do anything about it. So he can play wherever he wants to. So you're you're like you should think before sending your opponent to a already filled out spot or else you're giving him the power. Right? So once we've since we've done with most of the rules, right? We've dealt with that. Um, we now go to the strategy. Strategy is kind of long, but it's kind of, it's reoccurring as well, so it's easy to remember once once you get it. Actually, in this strategy, player one is always the victor because, well, it kind of creates a trap for X to always win in the end, right? Because actually in this strategy, like the, the only move that is not like forced by X, so player one, is the first is the first move. What I mean by that is that like X plays his first move. O's first move is the only move that O makes voluntarily. As in like on his own will wherever he wants to. The next ones are actually forced by X. And you'll see what I mean. Okay. Let's say we start with, not let's say, actually, the strategy starts with X playing straight down in the middle. Which means O is sent into the middle grid, right? So O plays anywhere in the middle grid, goes top right. X has now to play in the top right big grid. X's strategy is actually to take all of the centers, except one. So then what O does, X does, takes back this middle, middle which sends O back to the to the middle and play somewhere. O plays there, X plays back in the middle. O wins the middle, right? O might win the middle, but X still sends O back there because it kind of wastes his moves into completing a square that he already has. So X not only gains middle control of every single small square, but he also wastes O's moves. So then it keeps going like that. Now, for the last square, O is gonna have to send you to that last square, right? So what you do here, that since la in this case, O's last move was to send you to the top, uh, top middle uh, small square. What you do here is that you, as X, let's say, is are, you're gonna send at O to the same exact square that he just sent you in. So since he sent us to the top middle, we're gonna put X on the top middle. So now O is gonna be technically free, but he's gonna have to play in the top middle, right? So O plays anywhere, top right. What you do now is you do the same exact strategy. You block him into the top middle. Boom, he plays top middle. And then O has to play this again. He goes there, you go top middle. He goes there, you go top middle. Now there is a chance that O plays into the middle. If O plays into the middle, then you could technically play wherever you want to because this middle square is full. Middle square is full, that means you can play wherever you want. So what you should do is actually take the opposite square for where you're from. So since we started, we're, we're, what we're doing is trapping O here. We take the top middle of the one we're trapping, uh, we're trapping O in, right? So we take the opposite, we go here and we take top middle, which sends him back to where we are. He goes top middle, we take an X. We top middle here. And then now there's going to be a moment where X 
and where O is going to send you to a place where you're going to win, right? So O sends you there because he has no other choice. And then you win here, right? Boom, this is yours. This is yours. But now O has to play here since our last move was bottom middle. O has to play somewhere here. Let's say bottom left, right? You go bottom left and boom, you have another trap. You win here. I was like, oh crap. Like if I, wherever I play, you're, I'm, you're like you, your player one is going, is going to get a tic-tac-toe. So let's say O admits defeat and plays exactly where you, like you would want them. So since you have two of them here, he plays here and then you get your win. Because no matter what, where he puts his O, you always have a trap ready for him. And you get your tic-tac-toes. And that is actually how you win your game. That's how player one wins um, ultimate tic-tac-toe. Yeah. On to number two. So, our first game is called Wild Tic-Tac-Toe. It's played on a 3x3 board and... The objective of this game is the same as regular tic-tac-toe, and it's to get three of the same shapes in a row. The only difference is that both players can play any of the two shapes. So, uh, in order for player one to win, in wild tic-tac-toe, there's, there's only one strategy that possible. In wild tic-tac-toe, there's only one strategy possible that player one can do in order to win and that is playing in the middle for his first move then what player new let's say player two plays in any of the corners player one needs to play in the opposite corner uh that player two played in and using the same sign so here and then anywhere uh player two pl move plays uh player one will win so let's say he plays x here uh, player one, all all he has to do is play here. But let's say he plays uh, circle here. So player one has to play here. So in any of the cases, uh, in this scenario, player two wins. Uh, player one wins. For the second scenario, X still plays in the middle, but this time player two plays uh, in one of the middle spots. So let's say he plays here. Uh, player one's player one uh, second moves is going to be the same as scenario one, where he has to play opposite of his opponent's move using the same uh, shape so here. And then player two second move is uh, either he can't play corner or else he's going to lose. So then he plays top or bottom. So let's say top. Again, player one needs to play the opposite using the same shape, so bottom. And then no matter where where and what player two plays, uh, player one will win after. So let's say he plays X here, player one plays here. So in anywhere he, anywhere he plays, uh, player two and win will lose. So now let's go to regular tic-tac-toe. It's been like three by three board. Uh, each player takes turns to play, and the objective of the game is to get three of the same shapes in a row. And so now we're going to we're going to show you how to win tic tac toe most of the time. The first the first strategy uh, that player one needs to do in order to win is to play in any of the corners. So here, and then let's let's say uh, player two plays in an adjacent box. So here. Um, then player one needs to play in the middle, so, here. and then player two, since he doesn't want to lose, he needs to block player one, and all uh, player one needs to do is to play uh, between his, both of his moves, so here, and then he has two options, so player two can't block him, so let's say he plays here, X here, and then he wins. For the second scenario, um, player one still starts by playing in the corner, but this time player two plays uh, in an adjacent uh, square, so right next to him. And then 
for player one's second move, he needs to play in his adjacent corner, but that it, it that isn't touching player two. So here, and then obviously player two doesn't want to lose, so he plays in between them. And then all player one has to do is play middle, which creates two opportunities to win, and then player two can't win. Uh, can't block both of them, so let's say he blocks here, player one plays here, and then he wins. The last scenario for where player one wins is when he plays in the corners, and player two plays his first move in the opposite, uh, opposite square, like right here. And then what player one needs to do is play in any of his adjacent corners so let's say here and then what player needs player two needs to do is to not lose this block player one so here and then what player one needs to do is play in the middle so then he creates two opportunities to win and then player two blocks one so right here and then player one plays here and then he wins so that was uh the third uh scenario where uh, player one wins. Hello, this is Zach, and I'll be continuing the regular tic-tac-toe strategies. So what's left is just the scenarios and strategies for player two, or also the tied game for player one. So as we know, player one playing in any corner gives him an advantage in almost six positions that player two can put in, and the two remaining positions are the center and opposite corner. From the X's from X's first move. So if player two were to put were to, were to move in the center or the opposite corner from X, player one, player one's third move, uh, second move doesn't matter anymore, since player two will just block it or try to get three in a row, and then player one will block in return, and player two will block as well, and then this goes on and on until there's no more boxes to move into, and the game is tied. So basically, that is the strategy for player two, as to avoid a loss if player one plays in a corner. Just play in the opposite corner or the center. Next is math tic-tac-toe. Now, math tic-tac-toe is similar to normal tic-tac-toe, and the only difference is that instead of squares and O's, I mean X's and O's, you have numbers from one to nine. The premise is the same, since there are two players that take turns and each player must take a number from 1 to 9 in any order they want. And all they have to do is just put them on a 3x3 three three grid and make a 3 in a row, which, which add up to 15. And some interesting info on this game is that since there's 9 different digits and 9 different positions, the total number of configurations is equal to 9 factorial, or 362,880. The winning combinations for this, or the the rows that can add up to 15 are numbers 1, 5, and 9, 1, 6, and 8, and as I've listed here. There are only eight of them, so they can only be arranged six different times because of the three digits. So it's three factorial. And there are also eight different ways to line them up uh, from regular tic-tac-toe, the straight lines, the diagonals, the horizontal lines. So the total number of winning configurations is actually 8 times 8 times 6, which is 384 winning configurations. As opposed to normal tic-tac-toe, which is just 8. This is a lot more than regular tic-tac-toe. But surprisingly, this does not make uh, math tic-tac-toe a more difficult game, or less one-sided than regular tic-tac-toe. In fact, the way to win math tic-tac-toe is very simple. Again, the first player has the upper hand, and all you have to do is put 5 in the center box. That's it. Once you put 5 in the center box, any remaining number that will have a sum pair will always give 10. So what is a sum pair? Uh, an example is 1 and 9. So if you put 5 in the center and the opponent puts either 1 or 9 on any part of the square, all you have to do is put 1 or 9 on the opposite side, and it will give 10. I'll show you. So for example, 
you start off with five in the center as the first player and then the second player can put let's say four all you have to do to win is put six here and this adds up to 15. six plus four is ten plus five is fifteen you can do that again with a different number such as three so three plus what equals ten seven three plus ten is three plus seven is ten plus five is fifteen you can do that one more with let's try two all you have to do is take eight and the first player wins because this is the first player this is the second player and this is back to the first player again this adds up to 15 so as you can see first player will always win if you put five in the middle so since we've, we've established that the first player has an unfair advantage what does this mean for the game this does not really change anything except for the fact that if anyone that knows the strategy I just gave, it might make the game one-sided and not as enjoyable than if you didn't know it. That's math tic-tac-toe, and that's how you win it, as the first player, since the second player could never win. Thank you. This is no tac -toe. Um, It's another variant of tic-tac-toe where it's a combination of regular tic-tac-toe and nim. NIM is a mathematical game where two players take at least one object from different piles and whoever takes the last object wins the game. So no tac toe is also known as impartial tic-tac-toe. Um, it's played with two players on three separate 3x3 three three boards uh, where the players are only allowed to use X. Um, once one board has an X three times in a row, that board can't be played on for the rest of the game. The last person to get a three in a row on the last board loses the match, um, like you see that I did at the end. But for simplicity's sake, this can be compared to inverse tic-tac-toe, where it's considered a misère game, where it's a game where the player who's unable to move wins.